Oh, okay, it feels pretty good. I can't quite tell. I can't quite tell. Feels better. Feels better. I got Rowdy. one too. Yeah. You got one too? I got, yeah, I got, got some size, my there. size on this one. Let me get a net on here, Bubba. You said you were a good net man. I this, am a good this net is, man. This is a big fish. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. You with them crank, oh yeah, there you go, Bubba. Beautiful bass, Al. Big, beautiful smallies like this are on the move this time of year. You know, this fish probably spent its summer in the fast water sections and riffles and rocks way up the river section here, but now with the seasonal migration as the cold water hits, it's moving downstream through the deeper water of the reservoir section, looking for a deep, safe place to hide at this time of the year. As water temperatures dip below 60 degrees in fall, river smallmouths commonly migrate 20 to 40 miles during a dramatic seasonal transition. The fish are often here today, gone tomorrow, and seldom linger in any one area. The system we're fishing today encompasses many miles of free-flowing rocky river that flows into a shallow reservoir. At the beginning of the fall migration, upriver stretches still hold most of the fish. Mobile smallmouths tend to remain relatively shallow at this time, swimming downstream in perhaps three to six feet of water. Several weeks to a month later, as water temperatures dip from the high into the low 40s, smallmouths will have vacated the shallow upriver stretches in favor of deeper downstream areas where current dissipates throughout the reservoir. Arriving groups of smallmouths pile into deep wintering holes and begin forming huge concentrations where hundreds of bass cluster tightly together along the bases of drop-offs out of strong current flow. You know what's intriguing is usually you think about smallmouths being in the fast water and then if they're going to be on an island or a bunch of rocks they're going to be on the top side where the water's coming down and pounding that front face and is real turbulent. Well, the water here is real high and it's cool, it's a fall, and actually these smallmouths that we're catching are on the downstream side of what is basically an island here. And they're in that little pocket of, of a little bit calmer water on the bottom end of an island. And that's not usually where people would think about smallmouths, but under these conditions, it seems to be where the herd is gathering. I should have to wake one up before David gets in there with that other color. You know, whack him again. I just, I had the right spot right there. I had a good cast there. I should have meat hogged them on that one. Like that fish right there, big one there, David. My turn. <laughs> Want a net for that guy? Yeah. You know, with the DT, oh. I'd, I'd prefer. To. You're I on your own, I've got one. You got one I too? I got one too, yeah. Oh, David. You're making, you're making, well, I'm, I got mine first, so I net mine first. I got to net my own fish. I got to run the, who's, who's got the biggest fish? Well, I'm doing my, let me see, oh, yours, yours get yours in here. Come on, get them both in there. Lift them, lift them, all right. Oh, man, you know what? I gotta put them back. This fish is bigger than mine. Here, <laughs> get yours out of here. <laughs> the fish we're catching today are fairly shallow in about three to six feet of water. Our Rapa DT4 and DT6 crankbaits run just deep enough to tick bottom occasionally, revealing areas where the bottom changes from soft sand and silt to exposed rock. When we feel rock along the edges of the channel, get ready to set the hook. Oh,